Hey there, welcome to my kitchen chemistry lab where we are going to do a lab activity from my full year chemistry lab manual and that is the heat of fusion of ice. We are going to determine the heat of fusion of ice in this experiment with some data and a Chick-fil-A cup. Inside of my styrofoam Chick-fil-A cup, I have 100 milliliters pre-measured of some warm water, and we are going to start by taking the temperature of this water. While this is measuring, I want to remind you that the heat of fusion is the amount of energy needed to change one gram of water from a solid to a liquid or from a liquid into a solid. That number for water is 334 joules per gram. So using some warm water, we're going to see how close we can get to that 334 joules per gram from ice to liquid water. It's important to note that the freezing and the melting point of water are both zero degrees Celsius. So any of the ice in my freezer should be zero degrees Celsius. This water that I have in this calorimeter um, is actually 34 on the nose Celsius. This lab is not very action packed. I'm gonna take two ice cubes. Um, it doesn't matter the shape or size of them. We'll figure that out at the end. I am adding those to my calorimeter and I am going to not use the thermometer to mix this to, to get them incorporated. Um, should really use a stirring rod. I'm just gonna kind of swirl this because I have a very tall cup here. I also want to do what I can to not let any heat from the environment in. So I just have like a really heavy duty dish towel. And I can hear that there's ice in here. So I'm gonna do this until this ice melts. I'm gonna check the temperature and then I'm gonna keep adding ice basically until I get the water down to nearly zero degrees Celsius. Based on what you know about heat flow, what is the direction of heat flow in this situation? I have warm water at 34 degrees Celsius and I have some ice cubes at zero degrees Celsius. Still have a tiny bit of ice left. The reason we want to use a styrofoam cup is because it's a very good insulator. Um, the fact that this cup is very tall really does not help because there's a lot of warm air sitting in here. The temperature inside my house, I think is 68 Fahrenheit. I don't know what that is in Celsius. I guess I could use a thermometer. <laughs> okay, I'm going to let this take a reading and I'm going to get some more ice. We got down to eight degrees Celsius. I think I'm just going to add one ice cube. In a high school chemistry lab, a lot of the time these calorimeters are stainless steel and they're insulated very well. And I kind of have this twisty thing on the top. It just reminds me of when I was a kid and we would dye Easter eggs and you'd have like that little wire scooper. It kind of reminds me of that shape. And you just kind of spin that around inside of this um, calorimeter just to get the ice moving so that all of the warm water can touch the surface of this ice cube. This ice cube is having a much harder time melting. Why is that? We're still at eight Celsius, two degrees Celsius. All right, my water is down to zero degrees Celsius. Nope, it's two degrees Celsius. We are gonna call it there because it's really not changing very much. And this is all of the water. I am going to measure out the first 100 milliliters. That was the hot water that I used because I really just wanna find out how much ice has melted. Um, I'm gonna do that by subtracting 100 from the total. I'm using a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder, so I will just measure 50 twice to get 100. Okay, so our first 100 is set aside, just reusing the same container. And now this is the ice that melted. This is the water that's left over. So I'm going to measure what that volume was and figure out what exactly we're working with. Okay, so I'm not going to measure my graduated cylinder like this, but I will measure at the table I'm gonna say 43.9 milliliters is how much ice melted. That is it for the lab procedure. So we're gonna finish this up doing the math to figure out what the heat of fusion of ice is. Here we are to do the math. We are going to number one, determine the mass of the hot water we used initially. We began with 100 milliliters of water. And if the density of water is one gram per milliliter, then we would have exactly 100 grams of water. This 
there is really no need to do any calculation because it is a one-to-one. -one. For number two, we will have to determine the mass of the ice that was added. And when we had our final volume, we had 143.9 milliliters minus the 100 that we started with will leave us with the ice that had melted. So that came out to 43.9 milliliters. So again, the density of water is one gram per milliliter. So in that case, we don't have to do any math at all. It comes out to exactly 43.9 grams of ice. In order to figure out the amount of heat lost by the water, we, I'm sorry, lost by the hot water, we would have to take its mass, 100, times 4.18, times the change in temperature. So the um, way that we calculate delta T would be the final temperature, Tf minus Ti, which stands for initial. So the um, subtraction there is going to give us negative 32. And the reason it's negative is because this water is losing heat. So we have lost 13,376 joules. Um, I know that this is joules because C here in 4.18 is actually joules per gram Kelvin or Celsius. It doesn't matter which um, because they're the same size. Just scaled up or scaled down, but they are the same size. So either of those units work, um, but that's how I know that my answer is coming out in joules. I want to check on the amount of heat gained by the ice. So in order to do that, I'm going to do the exact same thing, except I'm going to adjust the numbers a little bit. So the mass of the ice was 43.9. Specific heat of ice is the same as water. And the change in temperature there is going to be starting at um, zero, which is the initial temperature. And the final temperature is going to be two. This comes out to 367 joules. So it's very clear that, um, my Chick-fil-A cup was not a very good calorimeter because we lost 13,000 joules to the environment. Um, so that means that the heat from my water didn't entirely was it wasn't entirely used to melt the ice. A lot of it escaped. It was used to warm up the cup. Styrofoam is good, but that styrofoam cup had a lot of air sitting on top of it because it was such a large cup compared to the amount of water in there. So that is um, a major error. But this that I've solved doesn't actually answer the question that's in the lab book. What we need to do instead is use Q equals MHF to figure out the heat of fusion of the ice. Knowing here that I have lost 13,000 joules, um, I can tell you that this is going to be really, really, really bad. It's going to be very wrong, but that's okay because we're here to learn. So I'm going to plug in this value for Q because theoretically, this is the amount of heat that the ice should have gained, even though it didn't. Um, so we're going to use this number here to answer number four, what the hour heat of fusion of the ice is, HF. And then we're going to plug that into the percent error equation. So we have 13,376. That's going to be equal to the 43.9, because remember, this is regarding the ice. And then that is going to be multiplied by H sub F. That is one term. The F is just there to describe the H. I'm going to divide both sides by the 43.9. And I will get HF equal to 304.7 joules per gram. Now, if you were to look up the heat of fusion of water, it's actually not too far off. 13,000 joules clearly was not going to break this lab. Um, so here, if we look at the real heat of fusion of water, it's actually 334 joules per gram. And our answer is 304. So we're, we're not too far off this 13,000 joules. I mean, joules are, are very small. Um, 
a lot of the time we would convert this answer into kilojoules anyway. So this would actually be 13.3 kilojoules. It's not really something um, that's, that's too far off in terms of real heat. So we're going to um, calculate the percent error between these two values to figure out how wrong we are. This is the percent error equation. And in this case, you take your measured value, which for us was 304.7, subtract the accepted value of 334, divide that by, again, the accepted value of 334, and we're gonna multiply this whole thing by 100. This should not come out to be a negative. It's really an absolute value. Many of us don't include that when we write the equation. Couldn't tell you why. When I complete my entire calculation, I am left with a percent error of 8.77, which is possibly the smallest percent error that I have ever seen for this lab. I would say that this is um, a really good percent error. Even though my results technically aren't valid, I would say this is pretty good. The reason for that is because high school chemistry lab equipment in this since for calorimetry is really not great. <laughs> and the reason is because, like I said at the beginning of the video, my um, kitchen was pretty warm. It's the winter time. I'm running the heat, although I wasn't running the heat during this lab. Um, I turned it off for just a second, but my home was warm. Um, and then we have the tall cup filled with a lot of warm air. All things considered, this was pretty, pretty good. Not the greatest the percent error here is going to be outrageous. And it's really just because of the nature of the equipment. Now, if you were to do this in a very high tech lab, you get really good results. And that's because we use bomb calorimeters, which are crazy sealed up. They're way too expensive for a high school chemistry lab setting. So for the most part, styrofoam cups do pretty well. Not as well as we would like, of course, but they do all right. So please let me know what was your percent error in the comments. I think it would be really great to kind of have this collection of data. It would also be good to know what type of equipment you used for this experiment as you did it, whether you use a, a real calorimeter cup or the type of styrofoam that you used. If you uh, reused, recycled your Chick-fil-A cups, let me know how the data turned out. Subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson, and I will see you there. Bye.